Welcome to SMTV Live. Thanks for joining us on this Friday afternoon, finally Friday. It's here. Uh, I'm Duncan Gilman. And I'm Ryan Miller. A couple of stories mm -hmm. that uh, I want to talk about today. One of them is one of these infographics that we that comes up every once in a while, and it talks about the time that users spend on social media in general, just, just an average. Two seconds on the infographics. Uh, they're a big deal now. They are. They're becoming a part <laughs> they're of marketing of strategy. Deal. They are kind of a big deal. A lot of companies popping up that are producing them. There's a lot yeah. of tools now that you can use to produce them. Uh, be watching out for some of those things. But here we go. We got a good one. This is from Socially Aware blog. It's um, uh, Morrison Forrester, I believe, is the the company, and they've got some great statistics. And what's important to keep in mind is this is just an average. Because when I looked at these numbers, they seemed a little low to sure. me. Uh, 6.75 hours on Facebook a month. Um, but as you mentioned when we were looking at this, it's probably because you know you don't think about it. When you, you're, you're on your phone, you just do a quick check of Facebook and then you're off. Right, because you know you get the top stories and see what your friends are doing and, right. and then you're in and you're out. Definitely interesting that Tumblr is second place. Yeah, that was surprising to me. Yeah, followed then by Pinterest, mm -hmm. Twitter, LinkedIn, and Google+. But Tumblr's getting a nice hour and a half a month yeah. on average. And you know, there'll be, of course, exceptions to this. We all know people that spend nine hours a day, of, of course, course, on Facebook. Yeah. Um, but I was really surprised. I mean, Pinterest doesn't surprise me too much because it's, it's images. You're right. in, you're out, you see it, you go. Uh, but Tumblr, I guess, a little bit more processing going on in there. Of course, some interesting things as you scroll down. This is uh, a pie chart of where people are watching video. So it looks at Hulu, YouTube, Netflix. Uh, we scroll down, and it actually goes further into how people are using the dual screen thing. You know, mm -hmm. they have a tablet or their phone while they're watching TV, and how they're watching TV. So, uh, ADD uh, paradise. Absolutely, really. I mean, right. multi screens, things going on. Um, but I, on that, I mean, it's, it is interesting. You get a little bit more information there. Very true. I have to point out my favorite part of this um, this infographic. Of course, lots of different companies create these, and people sometimes outsource. This one was created. Let me scroll down to the the credit here. The the company is Morrison Forrester, and of course, their website is in tiny print down here. Mofo. Mofo.com. <laughs> And speaking of, uh, we'll move into the Movember now. Mm -hmm. November is coming to an end, which means it Movember, is. the great campaign uh, that highlights and, and brings awareness to men's health issues like prostate cancer and testicular cancer um, that involves people growing mustaches and getting sponsors to pay for the, you know, the month-long facial hair growth. Right, and it's impressive. Uh, a handful of guys started this in Australia, um, found basically able to connect with some soul, connect with a, a, some passion and a purpose, and all of a sudden, uh, as we were reading earlier, uh, these were last year's numbers, but 800 and some odd thousand people uh, kind of uniting for this, so who knows what it's at this year, but it's very impressive. And one of the things it that is. we were talking about, uh, this is just an amazing act because people are taking the initiative to change how they look for a cause. How do you, how do, you do that? I, you know, that's, it seems to be one of the key things in these big household name brand kind of campaigns like Susan G. Komen, you've got the pink ribbon. Mm -hmm. With Livestrong, you've got the yellow bracelet. With Movember, you've, you've, you're wearing you your, mustache. your support. So it seems to be one of the key things in creating these, these global campaigns that really make a difference. That's right. You know, um, I tried last year. You did? I couldn't do it. I it think was I just, remember it that. It was just too, you know, patchy. I mean, this yeah. is fine. The mustache just wasn't happening. You're one up on me. I can't. There's nothing here. Yeah, it was just holy and patchy. No, I, you know. So maybe we have to come up with another way to support it. We will have we to develop. Grow it. Yeah, we'll have to develop our own new global campaign that you can somehow wear or change your appearance to show your support. That's right. I'm in. We're, we'll, we'll keep you posted. <laughs> We're here to help you with whatever social media campaign you might be working on. If you've got a question, let us know. So we make it very easy for you to email us questions, and you can email those to questions at splashmedia.com, or you can tweet them by using the hashtag SMTVQuestions. Let's take a couple questions now. Patricia sent us this. How do I promote a product in LinkedIn? Well, a couple ways. So first and foremost, we'll fly over to uh, one of our clients' uh, LinkedIn pages, and we'll, there's a segment in there um, that's all about products. And as you can see here, uh, you can list products, and one of the greatest kind of things you can do here is to be thorough. Uh, you know, detail these things out so that you've got a lot of information so people can, you know, really get what they're looking for. 
I totally agree. This is this is one of the best parts of the company page and the new look that company pages have because you can have a video on this particular product, you can go into detail in, in your description, on your overview, you can get recommendations for the product, and you can do a little promotion for it too. Yep. Love the ability just to have the contact information right there as Absolutely. well. It's just really simple, and we've seen a lot of good success for our clients based on this. You know, one way to, to create some organic buzz, um, in addition to having everything on your name, brand, product page, I love going into group discussions. This is another cool trick to try, is go into one of the group discussions, a generic, you know, non-competitive group in your industry, and start a question, start a discussion. Talk about something that is a hot topic in your industry, before you link to anything, before you provide any sort of link, just pose a question. Mm -hmm. Get some answers flowing and then maybe include your resource, yeah. include a blog, include something, a product that you have that's related to that issue. Yep. I mean, every day in all of these groups, like you said, specific to the, you know your industry, people right. have problems. Yeah. Nine times out of ten, the product or service that you have will solve someone else's pain points. You just got to find it. So many great little things in LinkedIn to take advantage of. That's right. We'll have a whole show on LinkedIn. <laughs> so uh, Karen wrote to us and asked, will I really be able to measure the ROI in social media? You can. The first thing you got to do is, is find what your goals are. So for example, on Safe Face, their goals are to sell masks to the consumer mm -hmm. who needs a, a mask mm -hmm. for any one of these outdoor activities. And the second goal is to connect with dealers who can, who can re resell the masks. So you got to find out what your goals are for your company and then work backwards from there. Right. So first step, you know, is definitely have those goals. And secondly, uh, we prefer to kind of draw out a little map of where, um, where leads happen, where sales happen, and then put tools in place to track those. One of our favorite tools here is just Google Analytics. Free, powerful, mm -hmm. useful, um, just really easy to interpret what's going on. Little things like that. Uh, and, you know, really have that goal uh, kind of here have what your path is, and then have those tools to connect the dots. Yeah, and there's so many little tactical things you can do. So Google Analytics is a great mm -hmm. big picture thing, and you can even focus in on you know, what's the entire path from where they came from to the checkout cart. Absolutely. And there are lots of little other tactical things that you can do when it's time to run campaigns or promotions, like create a shortened link that you can oh, track, yeah. um, have a call tracking phone numbers. You can see how many people are picking up the phone after seeing us on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So really cool things you can do in addition to the big picture yep. stuff. And one last thing on that, there's actually tools out there that you can associate a dollar amount with a social media action. Oh, that's cool. So a tweet might be 25 cents. You know that every time you get a tweet or a retweet, it leads to an action that might make money. So there's some people that have actually, you know, kind of driven all the way down to say that a tweet or a Facebook post or something is worth a certain amount of money, and at the end of the month, this program will actually tally that up. That's awesome. It's a little loose for me now, but down the road, who knows? Well, and it's just there's just math there, right? So yeah. there's you if you can determine what percentage of your sales is coming from Twitter or LinkedIn or Facebook, right. you can dial that in and say, well, for every you know hundred times someone refers gets referred to my site from Twitter, you know one of them yep. actually makes a purchase. You can see on average what each one of those referrals is worth a certain amount of money. Love it. Very cool stuff. Thanks for tuning in to watch another episode of SMTV, and thanks, as always, for sending us those questions. For Splash Media, I'm Duncan Gilman. And I'm Ryan Miller, and have a great weekend.